Wait, so, but I can't say they got it wrong if the best thing they could achieve in the last three years was getting swept by their arch rival. Well, that's getting it that's wrong. That's your definition of wrong. Now, yeah, the Mets everyone. got it wrong this well, year, well, and well, the Yankees well, got it wrong this year. The Mets punted. The Mets all out straight up said, we right. got it wrong. We're punting. The Yankees are refusing but, hey, to do so when all, they should. All Peter's doing, Michael, is just backing up the words that they said. What did Judge call last year? He called it a failure that they lost I, to the Astros. I get it. You know, I get so it, but you can't say they, they get always get it wrong. Like, they're a, a, a bumbling organization that doesn't can't get out of its own way and doesn't make the postseason. That's stupid. You sound like a fan. Con los rompo en discoteca. Tú quieres duro. Tú quieres duro. Live straight from New York City. Hola, mi gente. How's everyone doing today? I am Roberto Ruiz, aka Don Sicario. Welcome back to another episode of Don Yankee con el Body, brought to you by NYY News. Ladies and gentlemen, the New York Yankees have just been swept by the Atlanta Braves. I'm not surprised. You're not surprised. Your mom's is not surprised. Your pops is not surprised. Nobody's surprised <laughs> except for the Yankees brass. Because, you know, they're in it to win it. They believe that this is a championship caliber team. Unless that's just the front, just so they don't look bad, even though they do look bad. They have to believe, they have to know that this team right now isn't going anywhere. Unless by some miracle and the baseball gods decide to bless us, put them on a hot streak, and they just make things happen. I don't know. Weird things happen in baseball. But I don't think it's going to happen for us. Let's be honest. I don't know what Cashman has done to the baseball gods. Or I don't know what Hal Steinbrenner has done. Because listen, Hal Steinbrenner, he's on the, the hot seat as well. He should be on the hot seat with us fans as well. Because for years, we've been bashing Brian Cashman, Brian Cashman. Now we're getting worried that Hal Steinbrenner, he gave full control to, Hal, to Brian Cashman. So he should be on the damn hot seat. This New York Yankees team right now is 60 and 61. For the first time in I don't know how long, they're below 500. Damn, son. Below 500. Last year, without Aaron Judge, and I've said this before, without Aaron Judge, this team was mediocre. Without Aaron Judge, this team was trash. And they ran back basically the same team. And they believed maybe in their psycho heads that Aaron Judge would repeat. But unfortunately, Aaron Judge, loving this team so damn much and loving the fans, ran into a wall for us to make an out in Los Angeles in that damn Dodger Stadium and was out for a very long time. We've had, you know, he, he wasn't able to repeat the same year that he did last year. So the brass gambled again. They knew they went into the season saying they needed help. They they needed left fielders, that they needed catcher, blah, 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 all of these positions, and they didn't do anything. We are six and a half games behind in the wild card, folks. Six and a half games. Aaron Boone said we have there's enough games left where we could catch up. We just need to, you know. I don't want to quote him. Because at this point, I, I'm there's not much more we can say about Aaron Boone. There's not much more we can say about Bubbles. I know a lot of fans want his head, but listen, we're past that. We understand Aaron Boone sucks. At the same time, we understand he doesn't have control. Well, how does that make sense? Okay, fine. 
He sucks in the aspect of he can't motivate these players. I'm not talking about the the decision makings on the field. I'm talking about how he sucks in managing the squad and being able to to give moral support and being able to give these guys a boost. If he doesn't have full control of the team, how does he suck? Maybe the lineups. They tell him what line what what players to put, what how to put the lineup together. Who to put in at what inning if so and so gets on? Like he's getting orders from above. But I mean inside the clubhouse. When you try to rally up the troops, get them all hyped up. Aaron Boone has failed to do that. If you look at the dugout, they all look lifeless. At some points they even start chuckling and laughing. Which by the way, I don't have an issue with. I would I would be cracking up too if we, if we're if I'm in that dugout seeing how pathetic we look. That's not them having fun, folks. That's them shocked. <laughs> they shouldn't be shocked. I mean, it could mean so many different things. Somebody probably said to the other, Rizzo probably said to Judge, yo, we fucking suck. <laughs> and they all, you know, it, or I, I, I don't know. But at this moment right now, the New York Yankees, since what, 95 or something like that, have, have been up. Below 500 team and probably won't make the the playoffs. Hal Steinbrenner, you are on the clock, my guy. Because Cashman, we all know. We, we've been beating a dead horse on Cashman. We know this. I've been telling you for a while, we need to start turning this heat on Hal Steinbrenner. Mr. We're not done. Uh, I don't know why fans, I'm confused of why fans are upset. <laughs> Look. Hal Steinbrenner said he doesn't read the papers. He doesn't listen to the radio. He doesn't listen to podcasts. He doesn't listen to the fans. He doesn't know how you. <laughs> Damn, son. He says he's confused of why the fans are upset and turns around and says he doesn't listen to the radio or anything like that and doesn't connect himself. That's why you're confused, Mamo. Maybe if you would pay attention a bit. Maybe if you would listen to some podcast. Maybe if you would do something like that, you would have an understanding of why. <laughs> or just look at the damn game that's happening in front of you. Look at your product. Hal Steinbrenner is supposed to be such a businessman, right? So, so successful. Treat this team winning the World Series as your goal as you do in your business. Trying to meet that quota, making all of this money that you do. He hasn't been paying attention, folks. And it shows. Oh, they say that he's shy. He's he 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 doesn't like to make these decisions. He he was forced into it. It's a business for them, right? He just wanted to sit back and collect. They made they forced him to have to actually get involved. So what does he do? He he just gives Cashman the keys. Gives Cashman the keys to the Bentley. And Cashman starts gutting the Bentley and starts putting Honda Honda parts inside that damn um, engine bay. He starts replacing <laughs> the Bentley rims and starts putting these alloy cheap rims that he found on eBay. He gave the keys to Cashman, and Ca and then he he says, "Do not pass the luxury tax that they already passed." He's not allowed to sell. He's not allowed to make no moves. Because Cashman hasn't proven yet that he can make good moves. Damn, <laughs> the last, son. The last big move he made was getting Donaldson. Which Donaldson was getting paid tw over 20 mil. And he hasn't even contributed anything to this team. He has not helped them in any kind of way except mess their vibes up. Ever since that situation that happened with, with Tim Anderson, the vibes on that team... Pfft, Thumbs down. Went to crap. Ever since that situation, the Jackie situation, Brian Cashman said Donaldson was going to be the edge that this team needed. No, it wasn't. <laughs> you brought in a guy that had beef with a bunch of people on your team, especially with your ace. Damn, son. This season right now here, what did Cashman do to better this team? 
Carlos Rodon hasn't be, hasn't played a lot. I like Carlos Rodon. I I was okay. I wasn't begging to get for the Yankees to get him. But once they got him, and I started looking at a bunch of highlights, I was like, cool. He's hurt. Maybe he could come back. I'm not too. I I'm upset that he's hurt, but I'm not upset. He's not the problem on this team. It's our bats. It's the fact that our rotation is shot. And Brian Cashman, don't they see these things with the medicals? Don't I? I don't. I feel like the engine signs must have been coming up, and they have. They just ignored it. Don't these guys know? Don't they talk to these players and understand that some of them are okay? This guy's feeling some pain. Unless the players are stay quiet and don't say anything. I don't understand this whole philosophy that the Yankees have. Always bringing in these players. And then somehow they're always getting hurt. Michael K said that last season in the playoffs, the reason that they they didn't succeed was because DJ LeMayu, Ben Intendi, and Carpenter, since they were hurt, well... It ruined, it, it messed everything up. Those three jabronis should not be the reason why your team fails in the postseason. They should not be the reason why you barely get past the Cleveland Gardens. <laughs> <laughs> and then get swept by the damn Astros. After you sit out there talking about their cheating scandal. And the reason y'all lost is because they were cheating. So then guess what? They turn around and sweep y'all. Maybe cheating, maybe not. But guess what? They swept y'all. Oh, well, um, 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 Brian Cashman's name, his new name should be, um, this team is a mess. Their media, the people that they have handling the media are a mess. Michael K is a mess. Thank goodness Don LaGreca and Peter are up in, are in that show. Don LaGreca, shout out to him. Don, shout out to Peter because they're always... Trying to be the voice for us fans. Michael K is not the voice for us fans. He is the voice of Brian Cashman with his hand up his ass like a puppet. Because he gets so offended. You sound like a fan. Cash, Michael K hates the fans. Because they get him all rallied up. Because he doesn't want to hear how his baby boy is controlling the team. How, ter- how much of a terrible job his baby boy is doing. This overall... Oh, oh, Overall, it sucks. And uh, Yankee fans, I understand. We've been talking about this for a minute. And a lot of these shows are, well, this can happen, this can happen. How did you know this? You you didn't know that so-and-so would get hurt. If last year, a lot of the same guys have struggled with certain injuries and lingering, and you would think in the offseason they would make some other moves to to better and reinforce this team. They did not. They were going to wait and see how... How are you going to wait and see how the team performs when you, when you didn't reinforce it? You knew how the team was in the second half of last year. You knew that the team was mediocre at best 500 ball. You knew that. So instead of reinforcing it, you didn't. You, you brought in a bunch of journeymen. And then you're going to wait towards the deadline. Well, I want to see how they do against the Orioles. I want to see how they do against the Rays. And then decide not to do anything because you know the team sucks. Which is your team. Aaron Boone sucks at, at, at managing the squad. Being able to give them more support and amp them up. He hasn't been able to do that. He lost the club. Brian Cashman, Fishman, all the other jabronis in that brass suck. Because they've been doing all of these little cheap moves. Bringing in a bunch of injury prone players that have been injured in the past. Or dealing with an injury just to save a buck. And at the end of the day, Hal Steinbrenner, you're the reason for all of this. Because for all we know, Brian Cashman wants to make better moves. Because his ego is killing him. But Hal Steinbrenner is holding him back. And a lot of us didn't, wouldn't believe that last year, hearing that. But this year, especially during the deadline, Brian Cashman, I mean, Hal Steinbrenner stopped Brian Cashman from making any sales that could have made the team better. We could have gotten rid of uh, Severino. We could have gotten rid of Wandy. We could have gotten a, a, a few of these guys that would have probably brought us some better prospects to help us at least for next year or even for this year. Who knows? So, Hal Steinbrenner, you're on the clock, my guy. This offseason better be some bet. The Brash better have some shakeups. Just like how Don LaGreca said, Cashman better be fired. Not just Boone. 
They all need to be clean, clean house. And if you can't handle that, get give the get somebody else to to run this team or sell the team. Of course, it's not gonna happen. So it's it's a money mill for them. They're getting so much money out of this. But the Yankees right now are currently sixty and sixty one. Six and a half games behind in the wild card. Damn, son. Thank God we have Garrett Cole. But even then, we're still losing on the days that he pitches. So, Aaron Judge, they all look broken in his interviews. He's saying now he's quoting Aaron Boone. It's right there in front of us. Right there in front of us, folks. You know what's right there in front of them? A lot. The rest of the ALDs, <laughs> all the other teams. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. But Yankee fans, you sound like a fan. You sound like a fan. That's my best Michael K impression. Because he always sounds like he's whining. What do you want him to do? God. And that's what we stuck with. Hal Steinbrenner, wake up, my guy. Drink yourself a little bit of Butelo and, and knuckle up, bro. Start making some better decisions. A lot of these other, look, look at the Atlanta Braves, bro. Go up to them. Sneak in behind the building and, and have your checkbook and go up to one of their top dogs. Like, yo, I'll pay you. I'll triple whatever they're paying you here. Come, come work with us. Come to the Bronx. The people in the Yankees brass have been there for I don't know how long. A bunch of dinosaurs. Yet all these other organizations that have lapped the New York Yankees. Not only closed the gap, they've lapped them. Have a whole bunch of... Where are they getting these people from? Yankees need to, to start looking into some of these folks. Just like the Astros did. Just like the... I mean... Listen... The New York Yankees right now, six and a half games behind in the wall card. They're 60 and 61. Tomorrow, tomorrow they go against Boston. And <laughs> it's a three game series against Boston. I don't even know what to expect anymore, to be honest. After that is Washington, Tampa Bay, and the Detroit Tigers. If the Yankees don't make up any ground here, heesh. Oh, well. Follow me on Twitter, Don Sicario one Like and subscribe to this channel, at NYY News, on YouTube. Leave a comment. Tell us what you think, folks. When this at, whenever they tell you your opinion doesn't matter... BS, it does matter. This is the time, especially right now, where all of our opinions matter. We need to be loud, and this brass needs to understand why Yankee fans are upset. Cashman is confused. Um, House Steinbrenner is confused. Let him know. Fill up social media with all your opinions. Fill up these comments. Make your voice be heard. Don't show up to these damn games. Or if you do, have signs. Fire Cashman, fire Howell, whatever it is. They're starting to notice. Go on, go on, go on Twitter at NYY News. Hit up the shop. Treat yourself. Give to yourself. But remember, folks, at the end of the day, hold it down. Hello, New York Yankee fans. This is Ruben with NYYNews.com. Well, how should I go ahead and start this, right? You know, we, we're, we are where we expect it to be right now in the sense that we knew that the Atlanta Braves were going to go ahead and sweep us and make us look like utter fools. Um, the Yankees are under 500 for the first time in a, since, what, 1995, 1994, something. I forgot what the year was. Um, it was in the early 90s. And at this point, it's just really funny how, and comical, honestly, because... We never addressed left field. We acquired for for years now, ever since um, 
2009, Cashman has continuously um, dodged a lot of really good free agents. And at this moment in time, it's just really kind of funny to see how like he continues to get a shot after shot after shot of building a team. And it's like the revenue goes up, but the salary, the, 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 the salaries on the roster stay the same. You know, we keep spending the same amount of money and they keep pocketing the rest. But honestly, that's not even why I'm even pissed with Cashman. My, my problem with Cashman is why are you spending money on the wrong players? And everyone says, oh, it's not that it's not that simple. Um, he, you know, he has, uh, it, it, it takes two to tango, you know, yeah, it, other teams got to work with him or players got to want to come here. Well, that's part of his problem. That is part of his problem. That the fact that this guy doesn't know how to acquire legitimate players anymore. Every now and then it's like he, like he, like he made certain moves where like, wow, he did the obvious move. Like he made the obvious move of, uh, bringing in. A Gary Cole. But he couldn't do the obvious move of getting a Bryce Harper. A left-handed bat that we have been desperately needing in the entire time that we've had Aaron Judge in this roster. He almost let Aaron Judge go. The problem is not is not even how much we're spending. Because we're spending enough. And a lot of Yankee fans are going to say, no, how's being cheap? No. He doesn't. I get where how is coming from, and and this is partly his problem because he he's allowing Cashman to allocate money in the wrong areas. For years, we had like forty, fifty, sixty million dollars tied up in the bullpen. You, we were giving, you know, we're paying twenty five to twenty seven million dollars, um, a year for a Donaldson. We're going for washed up veterans. He's been doing this since freaking twenty what ten twenty eleven. Whenever like uh, A Rod and Jeter were really phasing out and were no longer the quality players that they used to be, and we didn't have the young players coming up that were cheap to to kind of help the roster move forward, and then when we needed to make the moves that that needed to happen, like Cliff Lee, Roy Halladay, we couldn't do it. So it's it's something that that is just mind boggling. For years, Cashman could not acquire pitching. He was horrible. At acquiring pitching, he said no to a prime Randy Johnson. Brings him in when he's wa- when he's old. Um, he he um, pays um, Mike Musina more money than what Randy Johnson wanted when he was in his prime. Like imagine that. Then you go and, and granted, I'm not. I'm, it's not a knock on Mike Musina. It's, it's a knock on Cashman for not doing the obvious thing of, of putting a prime Randy Johnson with a Roger Clemens. Like that's just ridiculous. Then. I mean, it just goes on and on with all the horrible moves. The, it, it, you have young players coming up. They're excelling. You want to build around them while they're cheap. Then why don't you go and get a Bryce Harper? Why don't you go and get uh, the necessary players like a Manny Machado? You, and, but no, they'll go for another player... That to me, while well, yes, he won the MVP and Giancarlo Stanton, and honestly, I was okay with, with Giancarlo Stanton, but the way this guy seems to not stay healthy, and honestly, in his entire career, he only had two healthy seasons prior to re- um, getting to the Yankees, and the Yankees just coddled him and made him even more injury prone. So it's like it's gotten to the point that the Yankees just don't know what common sense is. And the problem is that their players are gonna get hurt no matter what. So stop with the with the resting. Stop with the load management. Guess what? If they're gonna get hurt, they're gonna get hurt. It is what it is. This team is a reflection off of Cashman and Boone. And a lot of people try to uh, defend one or the other. No, they both need to go. Boone ha- is the leader of the clubhouse, right? He's supposed to be. He's the manager. And this team has taken his mentality onto the field. The guy doesn't respect the competition. He doesn't respect the nature of competition. 
He throws a game every series. There's at least one game that we know he's going to throw a punt lineup he, he, where he puts in bench players that honestly should not be playing all that often. Like, there's certain bench players that th- their role is just to, hey, make sure you're, you can, you're available. If we need you to um, relieve someone for an inning or two to get them off their feet once we're winning 7-1, to 8-1. But no, the, the the Yankees act like the, 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 it's like oh yeah, we're just gonna make the postseason because we're just we're the Yankees. We're gonna go and make it. No, you need to go and respect the competition. The spirit of baseball is about playing every day, and the Yankees don't do that. The Braves show them play your guys every day. Have them want to be great. Who on this roster, besides Aaron Judge, who also needs to learn how to not go um, for certain balls on the field that will cause him to get injured? Because like that is one thing about Judge. He needs to learn how to avoid getting injured at times. It's okay to go 100% rather than 130% for Judge because he, he, he sometimes goes too hard. But the rest of this team, who on there is truly trying to be great? And to be great requires not just talent, not just um, the ability to hit the ball 110 miles an hour, which is useless if you can't do it consistently. Part of being great and being considered a a great baseball player and a great baseball team is having guys that want to play every day and put up a Hall of Fame type career. And we have too many guys they are okay with just sitting on the bench, or, or at this point, they've given up on fighting for their for their case to stay in the lineup because you have a boon um, doing this. Where like he's just like, no, it's okay. We can just throw this game away. It's fine. It's fine. We're, we're, we can still win. No, you play your best players, man. At, at a certain point, you can't avoid injuries, whether you rest them or not. To be honest. Some players just get hurt more than others. So how about you do a better job of just st- like playing your players and letting them dictate when they need a day off? This scripting stuff that the Boone is doing isn't the answer for the Yankees. And the, the whole bullpen chart, that's a guideline. That's not a must-have. That's not something that is supposed to be like, we have to do it this way. If you have to use a guy for the third day in a row in a high leverage situation, in the seventh, you do it. Or how about allowing your starters to condition themselves to uh, throw a certain pitch count consistently as long as they're not blowing the game? How many times has Boone taken out pitchers with different pitch counts in the 80s and the 90s and then all of a sudden he allows, allows them to throw 100, but then he takes them out for five starts in a row with 80 pitches after they're pitching well because he's just so itchy to go into the bullpen, but then he's worrying about the bullpen management and not having guys rested. Which one is it, Boone? Boone needs to go because this team is reflecting his lackadaisical, unprepared way of managing because he throws every game expecting that we're just going to win it. He tries to steal wins. He doesn't try to win. He doesn't go for it. Same thing with Cashman. We needed a left-handed bats. Well, look at that. We don't have any real legitimate left-handed bats of the best bats. Rizzo was nice for a bit before he got the concussion. But at this point, what's it worth? What's it worth? You're trying to have healthier players? You had one in Freddie Freeman available. And a lot of people say, oh, he's not coming to New York. He's going to pay $27 million a year. You're telling me you couldn't have offered him $30, $32 million? Make it tough on him to say no? At this moment in time, like Freddie Freeman is the, the perfect player that we should have had. A guy that can stay healthy, a guy that hits for average, that's consistent, that wants to be great, a Hall of Fame type of player. But yet, Cashman keeps settling for guys that have been are washed up, guys that are losing their skills, guys that don't age well, or guys that simply, you look at them and... You understand that you're paying them a lot of money to be 
the great value, you know, the Walmart brand version of a Bugatti. We have a saying <laughs> in Puerto Rico that basically says the cheap stuff will cost you more money. Damn, son. Right now, the, the, the Yankees, it's they're paying so much money for lesser players because they don't want to go for the real thing. The quality isn't there. They're spending $290 million on what? Exactly. The Yankees at this moment don't have an idea of what a real ball player looks like. And it's so, so ironic how we have, you know, a whole bunch of left-handed bats that we pass up on. And then, and then to gaslight us, you know, to go and say, we're not done. We're not done yet. Hal, you're a freaking liar. You're a liar. Trying to make us think that you're going to go and make a big move. Why don't you just be sincere? This entire time, Cashman has been trying to build through the system because it does, he doesn't go after the free agencies like he's supposed to. Cashman always struggled at acquiring pitching. All of a sudden, now he's good at acquiring pitching. I'm not going to lie. He's done pretty good at acquiring pitching. I mean, he's not managed well by Boom, but but the talent is there, and we got a lot of pretty good arms. But now he doesn't know what a, a what a bat in the a consistent batting average is in the lineup. He doesn't know what a left-handed bat is worth in, in Yankee Stadium that's built for left-handers. Like, it's just it's just crazy. Some of the things are just straight up common sense. This team just doesn't understand. I'm glad they're under 500. Hopefully, this sends a message that the money that they're paying on this roster is going down the drain and it's because they keep settling. And also, if you finally have a young player that's worth keeping, stop waiting till free agency. Freaking sign him. Have them understand, hey, we expect you to be great. Now go be that. Here's the money up front. You already had a, a one or two great years. Hey, we really want you to stay here. Don't screw, don't screw with them like you did with Judge, almost losing in the, 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 to the point that Howe actually had to step in because Cashman, is, 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 his ego is too much. I am sick and tired of, these, uh, of the way the front office runs the Yankees at this moment because they're so arrogant, thinking they're the smartest people in all of baseball and they can fleece everyone. Sometimes you simply just got to go for the obvious move. And look, at this point, how if you ever listen to a podcast, go get someone from the Braves. Go whether it's Alex Anthopoulos, who I doubt will ever be available with the way he, with the remarkable job that he's done in building this Braves team. But get someone from that front office that can bring their philosophy to New York. Overpay if you have to. But at this point, we need a philosophy of you want to wear the pinstripes every day. You want to be great. This team lacks passion. They lack the desire to be Yankees. The only one that shows it right now, to be honest, that, that's, that's just I love the way he plays because he doesn't, he doesn't put up excuses. And that's IKF and Aaron Judge, those two. Because IKF said, I'm glad that I'm a Yankee still. But you got all these other players not trying to be great. They're just trying to get by. Call me a fan. Call me a, 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 oh, what do I know? That's what we see on the field. Okay? That's what we see on the field. Because we see a Glaber that that dogs it on the bases sometimes. And then all of a, all of a sudden, he does really good plays on the bases. You need to be consistent, bro. Like, enough with this stuff. We need the players to finally show up and take pride in being Yankees. And we need to stop settling for lesser players, especially if they don't have what it takes to be in New York. And if you develop young guys, commit to them. You screwed up, uh, uh, you're screwing um, with Peraza, with Floreal, guys that have made the adjustments necessary to get a real shot, and you'd rather give it to Journeyman. 
Like, man, what is wrong with this team? They have uh, uh, some really nice talent in AAA that have made all the adjustments that there was necessary. And you won't give them a shot. But you won't trade them away. You won't release them. Oh, I can't get him on the 40-man roster for Francis Cordero. The guy shouldn't even be on the roster. Freaking call out Florial, who has six years of control left. Or five years of control, whatever it is, because you already started his his clock on, um, in the majors since you, you've called him up and set him down for two weeks and called him up and set him down for two weeks. Like, you wasted Florial's the freaking development. Cashman doesn't know how to handle prospects, bro. And this is ridiculous. This is why we need someone from the Braves um, and someone from the uh, from the Texas Rangers that says, hey, these are the core players that we're going to go ahead and give a shot, and the other ones we're trading. And that's it. Stop messing around with their value. It's ridiculous at this point. Floreal, Peraza, Everson Pereira now, Wells. I mean, you get your, this team is so slow in a, in committing to the young players and they're waiting until like they're 27 years old past their prospect status to give them a shot and when they've already kind of ended up becoming busts. So either commit to the young players, select the ones that you want, trade away the ones that you don't, and stop with it. Stop. This team is ridiculous. This has already gone longer than I initially intended. But I am sick of this team. Sick of it. Anyways, guys, this is Ruben from mynews.com. Peace, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I would like to know your thoughts. Peace. Mixing live straight from New York City.